The Scottish Highlands, a vast, untamed landscape of rolling hills, deep glens, and ancient beauty. For centuries, this region has whispered tales of a wilder past, one where wolves roamed freely. Now, a study from February 2025, led by researchers at the University of Leeds, suggests these predators could return after a 250-year hiatus, not as a threat, but as a key to restoring balance. This could mean a lot for Scotland's environment and its future. The highlands were once covered in native woodlands, pine, oak, and birch stretching across the terrain. But over time, those forests dwindled. One major factor, red deer. These animals, native to the region, graze heavily on young trees, preventing woodlands from regenerating. With no natural predators to keep their numbers in check, deer populations have soared, leaving the landscape more open than it once was. In fact, Scotland currently only has around 4% of woodland coverage, among the lowest of any country in Europe. Regeneration of trees has been somewhat successful in areas where fencing restricts deer, and deer management has been helpful in some areas, but the latest estimates are that around 400,000 deer are roaming the highlands now. That's where wolves come in. The study proposes introducing about 167 wolves across areas like the Cairngorms, Central Highlands, and Northwest Highlands. By preying on deer, wolves could reduce their numbers just enough to give trees a fighting chance. The impact could be profound. Researchers estimate that revitalized woodlands could absorb around 1 million tons of carbon dioxide each year. That's a significant boost in the fight against climate change, equivalent to removing hundreds of thousands of cars from the roads. Beyond carbon storage, expanding forests would create habitats for other species, from birds to small mammals, enhancing biodiversity across the region. It's a ripple effect, with wolves acting as a catalyst for ecological recovery. There is an increasing acknowledgement that the climate and biodiversity crises cannot be managed in isolation, said lead author Dominic Spracklin of the University of Leeds School of Earth and Environment. We need to look at the potential role of natural processes, such as the reintroduction of species to recover our degraded ecosystems, and these in turn can deliver co-benefits for climate and nature recovery. But this isn't just about nature doing its work. There's an economic angle too. Reintroducing wolves could open doors to ecotourism. Think guided tours, wildlife photography, and visitors drawn to the mystique of a landscape shaped by predators. Places like Yellowstone National Park in the United States have seen success with wolf reintroductions, balancing ecological gains with tourism revenue. Scotland could follow a similar path, turning a bold idea into a practical opportunity. Of course, it's not without challenges. Farmers in the highlands rely on livestock, and wolves could pose a risk to sheep or cattle. The study acknowledges this, emphasizing the need for careful planning, perhaps fencing, compensation programs, or community involvement to address concerns. Public support will be critical, too. Wolves stir strong emotions, from awe to apprehension, and any reintroduction would need to bridge those divides. Researchers point to examples worldwide where coexistence has been achieved, suggesting Scotland could find its own way forward. So, what does this mean for the Scottish Highlands? Reintroducing wolves could be a step toward healing a landscape out of balance, restoring woodlands, curbing emissions, and reviving a piece of Scotland's wild heritage. It's a complex proposal, blending science, economics, and a touch of history. The Highlands have always been a place of resilience and adaptation. Now, they might be on the cusp of a new chapter, one where the howl of a wolf signals not just a return, but a renewal. Whether Scotland takes that step remains to be seen, but the possibility alone is a testament to the power of nature's interconnected web. Don't stop here. Find out more. Visit the links in the description below for more in-depth information on the stories presented in this video. Or if you are a part of a wildlife organization doing something interesting right now, let us know in the comments.